Hello and welcome back to PyBytes YouTube. And here's a follow-up video of the um, bulk create Django video yesterday, which I recorded uh, in an attempt to set up uh, a bit of data and uh, modeling in Django to uh, show you the n plus one problem. So first of all, let's look at what the n plus one problem means. And uh, ChatGPT, of course, list out these uh, type of questions in a very concise way. So I can just quote, the n plus one problem is a common performance issue that occurs when an application retrieves related data from the database in an inefficient manner, often leading to a large number of unnecessary queries. So that's all I really need to um, have as a theory. Of course, um, being practical as private, in this video, we're going to look at a practical example and do one small tweak uh, with the ORM to make the page much faster. It's a bit of a contrived example, but it does happen a lot when starting to, um, you know, we, we start simple with one model, but once you start to build up relations, it gets complex and you often need to um, use the data from various related or linked models. And that's where this uh, issue can, can happen. So let's look at some code. So actually yesterday's code, I put it all in a repo so that you can play with it and you have a copy. Uh, you don't have to type it from the screen. And I also used branches and pull requests to kind of see what I did. So we had the initial code yesterday um, where we saw, you know, the ball create and the, the speed up I talked about yesterday. I've also linked that video below. And I did a bit of setup for this to, to get started. So let me just quickly walk through it. Also made it some commands because the... Um, Django debug toolbar was not that obvious. And I probably will do a separate video on that, how to get that set up. But yeah, I added a, so we had a books app. Um, I added some, a template. I added URLs to link to the view. And I have a view, just a book list. And here I retrieve all the books. Now going with a million rows was a bit ambitious. That would totally slow down the page. So I'm actually getting the first thousand rows, which are plenty to demonstrate this issue. Uh, and you can use an underscore to um, as a little bit of uh, syntactic sugar to better um, separate thousands. Uh, it's a really nice uh, Python feature. Uh, I rendered uh, the template, and yeah, this this was the setup for the. Um, debug toolbar, which I will defer to a separate video because it uh, might not be super obvious. Okay, so that's the setup and that's the current state that the main branch is in and that's where we're going to work from. So I have the app here, I have it running here with run server. Let's see what happens when I go to the home page. So the debug toolbar renders on the right. And I can go to my template and you see that the page took a little bit to load. I can go to more rows to make it more dramatic, but the problem is that then if I go to the SQL uh, queries, that becomes very slow, almost unworkable. So it seems like 259 milliseconds, not bit, that big of a problem, but there's also the CPU time of, um, 2.6 seconds, right, to retrieve 1,000 rows. That shouldn't be that slow. And again, it's enough to show this issue, right? So uh, sorry, if I look at the SQL, so this is the debug toolbar, right? And it's um, divided into different sections. And what you probably will be looking a lot at is the SQL section to show what SQL code the ORM runs. And here you see the, uh, the, the ugly inefficiency in its face um, that all these select queries, uh, so it's doing basically thousand queries. Every time it's doing to do a select from the books, um, author table and um, matching ID equals something, right? So doing a thousand queries and that just makes this very slow. So, the lesson or the fix is to use the select related in the ORM. So if we go to my view, um, again, I didn't show the models. So these are the models. We have a book model and it has a one-to-many relation uh, with authors, right? So um, every book pertains to one author and an author can have many books. So we have the author as a foreign key on the book and we retrieve all the models 
And this, this is okay. This is not where the performance issue happens. It's actually happening in the template, right? So in the template, uh, we look through the books and then we actually in the loop, so a thousand times, it's going to traverse that relation, right? It's going to go from book through the foreign key author to get this name attribute. So here it traverses the relation and that's where the query happens. So every loop a thousand times is going to do a query here. Now, how do you fix that? Well, going back to the view, instead of um, doing all, I can do select related, and then I pick the name of the foreign key. So that was author, that's the name of the foreign key. And I put that here. You can also do multiple, but in this case, there's only one relation. And again, I used a slice here of thousand because otherwise, um, this problem became really um, unworkable, right? Uh, okay, so I saved that. That should reload the run server. And if I now refresh the page, so let me close this. That's instant, right? So um, this is one millisecond, that's already better. But this also went from two seconds to 300 milliseconds, right? And I just did three queries only, right? So, and this is actually, the Django stuff, Django session author, that's not my app. So in my own app, I did a single query uh, very fast. And as you can see, it actually did a join with the other table. So it, it did one join up front, and that's how it reduced from um, a thousand to one query and it became super fast. Now, some people that are already um, well-versed in Django might uh, wonder, well, there's select related, but there's also prefetch related. And how I remember it usually is that the select related, so the one we showed today, is for run the many or where you have a foreign key. So this type of relation. And the prefetch related is for many to many. And I use that way less actually. So for example, if I look at the platform code and I do an AGG, by the way, that's an alias for AG, which is the silver searcher. Um, if you don't have that, please install it. It uh, makes it very fast to recursively look in your code base. Um, but then this one does it only for Python files, right? So it would ignore templates. Uh, so if we do AGG for select related, that actually I've used quite a bit uh, in the um, on the PyBytes platform to make all kinds of performance enhancement because we have like, I don't know, 40, 50 models that are, a lot of them are, are linked together. And here, um, I use that a lot to put, to do those joins and save hundreds, if not thousands of queries. And it really has helped me speed up the page. But if I do then an AGG of prefetch related, that only happened uh, once or twice. And tax was a many-to-many -many relation on the byte model. And that's where I, I use that. So I don't expect you to use this that often as the select related. Hence, that was the one I showed today. I hope this makes sense and uh, that you see that with some little tweaks in ORM, you can make your Django queries much faster by having it um, not do inner queries, repeated queries over and over again, but do a join up front. So that's also kind of something to keep in mind and what data engineers kind of always uh, <laughs> use against me as a Django fan. ORMs are nice, but they're not um, often optimized for SQL. So yeah, then that means that you need to go a bit deeper into the ORM to make those um, optimizations. And this this is a an important one to, to keep in mind. All right, so one follow-up is the Django debug toolbar. I will do a separate video on that. I had some issues with that today, which was not obvious. So um, then it's my task to explain that and share it. And other than that, if you have questions, comment below. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and have a good day.